Uh, thanks very much for coming along today. It's obviously been a difficult couple of days um, for the WACA, but uh, 18 months ago we said um, we wanted to become a new organisation and be an organisation that everybody could look up to. And um, unfortunately um, we've had to um, make some harsh penalties in this case, um, but I'd like to start off by saying whilst um, we don't condone what's happened uh, on Wednesday, um, both Tim and Tom have managed themselves very well through the past couple of days and showed um, tremendous character in standing up um, uh, to what they've been accused of. I'd like to um, read out uh, the penalties that have been imposed today and accepted by both uh, Tom and Tim. I'll start with uh, Tom. Tom has been released from both his Western Warriors and Perth Scorchers contracts effective immediately. Um, he will also undergo 40 hours of community service in an area of alcohol-related harm. There will be no match payment, and which is a $960 fine for the Futures League match during which the incident occurred, and will not be considered for any selection in any WACA team for the remainder of the 2013-14 season. Tim Armstrong has, um, will do, undergo 20 hours of community service in an area of alcohol-related harm. He also will not receive a match payment which amounts to a $960 fine for the Futures League match and he also will not be considered for selection in any WACA team for the remainder of the 2013-14 season. Um, before I take any questions, I'll get Tom to, to read a statement and then I'll take questions after that. Uh, I'm sure you understand that for legal reasons I can't discuss the events of this week specifically but I'd like to say a few words. I want to apologise to those who are close to me because that's one part of this week that has left me most disappointed that I've let down some people who have helped me tremendously in recent times. I've been working through some personal issues in the past six months relating specifically to alcohol abuse and my mental wellbeing. This incident is obviously a backward step from the progress that I have made in those areas with the help of others. I'd like to apologise to Warriors and Scorchers coach Justin Langer who invests so much of his time and energy into his players and who has always been there for me in my cricket. I know he would have taken to heart my actions and I want, to know how sorry I want him to know how sorry I am. I want to apologise to our CEO Christina Matthews and our General Manager of Cricket Operations Ben Oliver who have also done their best to help me work through my personal issues in the past 48 hours. I need to apologise to our Scorchers and Warriors captains Simon Kadich and Adam Voges as well as the wider playing groups and the fans of Western Australian cricket. All the boys hold themselves to high expectations on and off the field. I did not meet those expectations and I'm sorry. I want to apologise to, to Healthway. The WACA entered a partnership with Healthway because of the shared values that both are working towards. The players signed up to those values because we all agreed and wanted to help make those changes, but I've failed to do that. I want to apologise to my family, friends and those close to me because they care about me and know watching what has happened in the last week, I know would be really hurting them. Finally. I want to say thank you to the Wackers Player Welfare Officer Angie Bain, whose support for me has never waned and has helped me to take steps forward despite this incident. This is a difficult time for me, but I'm fully aware that it is something that I caused through my choices and actions. I'm determined to look back at this moment as a turning point in both my life and my career. I hope that when I look back, I look back from a position of having worked to regain trust, respect and the privilege of playing first class cricket. Thanks, Tom. Yes. No, it had nothing to do with our sponsorship. Um, as I said, after our incidents in South Africa, we said very strongly we wanted to be a different organisation. And, um, uh, you know, when this unfortunate incident occurred, we were very determined to prove that point. Um, it's not ex that behaviour is not acceptable to us, to our players, to our staff, and it, it is uh, not acceptable to the people who support cricket in, in this state. And um, Healthways have been a, a very strong supporter of, of ours and uh, gave us great confidence that they felt we would deal with this appropriately and have had nothing to do with it. Um, irrespective of your sponsorships, you've got to stand it up for something as an organisation and it's unfortunate for both these boys um, who are essentially good people that they've made a mistake and they have to pay for it. It's, it's an obligation to contact your major sponsor and let them know that um, something's going on. Um, and as a matter of um, courtesy, we kept them up to date with our actions, but they at no time um, asked or impressed upon us to make any particular penalties. So is it is it basically like a, a, a no, the no tolerance policy? Is it one strike and you're out with the team? 
There's no rules around one strike and you're out. We have a set of values and a set of expectations ar around our players that have been um, strongly supported by our playing group. And as you would have heard Simon Kadic yesterday, as a playing group, they felt let down and didn't see this as a reflection of, of that group. But at some point, people have got to stand up and um, that's what we're doing today. And a credit to both of these um, young blokes is that they accepted their responsibility and they accepted the penalties that were handed down. Well, I think Sean Marsh is a great example of that. Um, 18 months ago, he was back playing club cricket and no one thought he had a chance. And he, uh, all but for injury, he'd be playing test cricket for Australia again. So the door's never closed. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of us here would have children and they make mistakes and they grow and they come back. And I think these two blokes have that opportunity, but it comes down to them. The players, uh, they free play grade cricket yes. from this weekend? Yes. Yeah. What relationship do they have with the Wacker now? No, as, as individuals, we will continue to support them from a, a welfare perspective. As Tom indicated in his statement, he's been working through um, some services with our staff and we'll continue to provide those services to both of them as required. It's very important in these situations that you don't, in Tom's case, terminate a contract and then um, cut him off as an individual. So we'll provide him whatever support he needs in order to um, uh, solve his issues. Christina, is it correct that uh, Justin Langer had to, he was up in Brisbane at the time of the incident, yep. had to personally go down to the police station and deal with that? No, that's not true. He did go to the police station, but only um, on, we asked him to go down and ensure that we were aware of what the charges were. The, the community service, was that, did the players offer that almost as, you know, as a... Uh, it was our um, insistent, I mean, we live in a society now, as we're all aware, Danny Green's very heavily promoting around the country about the violence that's existing with alcohol. And um, we wanted to put the boys in a situation of understanding what harm that could do, either from a, a health issue, violence or, or other things. So it was important for us that they got to see what the end result could be. And was it purely alcohol involved in this situation? Yes. The, the actual community service, can you, given that they're no longer contracted, or certainly Tom and Tim hasn't been, can you enforce that as an organisation? Oh, it, it, they have a choice in whether they do it or not, but um, part of their development as a human being is to see out their penalties. And how do you see this incident affecting the, the, the gains that you have made in terms of no perceptions about the culture around the uh, I think... Um, the important thing is how will we respond to this thing. You, you can't stop things from happening, but you could put in place parameters so people understand what's acceptable and what's not, and then what the punishment um, will be. I think it will strengthen the playing group and the organisation in regards to how they want to be perceived. Um, they've all worked very hard on that, and as you all know, Justin, more than anyone, um, has driven that with the playing group. So um, I think it will just uh, galvanise the, the group. You talked about that, that hard work. That's a long, you know, there was a lot of problems, and then for a long time, it's been it's been really good. The culture is yeah. it crushed. Is it really frustrating now from the CEO's perspective that some of this happened? Oh, I I don't think there's anything wrong with the culture due to uh, one incident. Uh, of course, it's frustrating, but um, if we're going to go through life without any challenges, you know, it would probably be. Um, a very interesting life. We've got to deal with these things. Not everybody's perfect. We've got, um, you know, 70 athletes that we deal with or more. Um, we'd be foolish to think that, you know, there wouldn't be errors along the way. But what you want to do is mitigate them as much as possible and make people um, accountable and then help them become better people. Off oh, around about three o'clock, three thirty. In regards to this year, obviously during the night people went out for dinner and, um, you know, relax after the game, but there was no one out, um, you know, at the time they were out.